The Treasury's health is robust, but we must always be wary of unnecessary expenditures and watch out for possible avenues of profit. With that in mind, I would like to discuss the thorny issue of child benefits, which were abolished under your brother's rule. There are vocal elements within the community who are clamoring for us to bring it back. In the interests of the Treasury, and of the long-term welfare of the people, I have a counter-proposal. I'm so happy you decided to follow my suggestion. There will be less mouths to feed and more gold to stockpile. A win-win situation. If one ignores the inevitable loss of popularity. Shall we proceed with the rest of your appointments? Here is the royal agenda for the day. As you can see, you have two audiences in the throne room to begin. I've heard rumors that Reaver's latest proposals are both scandalous and delicious. It should be most entertaining. My king. His Majesty, the King of Albion. Hail and well greeted you. This hearing concerns the future of the Bowerstone Shelter and Orphanage. Paige will speak for the disenfranchised people of the city. Reva will dispute her cause. You may speak. Your Majesty, the shelter has long been the only refuge for the homeless, the poor, and the orphaned. And until we can change the whole world for the better, it will continue to be their only hope of survival. Isn't it time we held out a helping hand to those who need it most? The shelter is underfunded and the building has fallen into disrepair. Invest in the shelter and orphanage and perhaps we can begin to... It is time Bowerstone had its first whorehouse. The shelter shall become a brothel. Excellent, Your Majesty. I will see to it immediately. And I mean immediately. <laughs> this is exploitation, Your Majesty. Your people won't be pleased. Does your heart have a sizable hole that can be filled only with love? Do your pockets jingle with leftover gold? Then Reva Industries is pleased to present the House of Requited Affection, where money really does guarantee happiness. Today, you will deal with a pressing environmental issue, the disposal of the city's waste. Reaver will offer his proposal. A member of the Morningwood community will stand against him. You may speak. Your Majesty, I'm sure you will have noticed a certain aroma permeating the city of late, even more nauseating than usual. I fear... Morningwood is to be left unspoiled. We will find other ways to deal with Bowerstone's sewage problem. The king has spoken. Morning wood shall not be used as a waste site. The sanitation committee will look into safer alternatives. Groovy. You are like a majestuous eagle, your majesty. You are in touch with your inner, your inner innards. Granny nature thanks you from, like, the bottom of her heart. A pity. I must admit, I was rather looking forward to breathing fresh air, but I'm sure your majesty knows best. There is nothing as important as the health and hygiene of our citizens. As such, Riva Industries is delighted to announce the opening of the Bowerstone Sewage Recycling. Facility, because there can be no affluence without effluence.
The day is almost over, Your Majesty. Only one more appointment left. Page has requested a meeting in the old rebel headquarters. How very cloak and dagger. I wonder what she wants. It's not every day a king walks into the rebel headquarters. You've changed the world since we lasted here. Good. Kid went undercover with a gang of robbers and found out their plans. They're going to strike the tavern in Bowerstone Market. If you get there in time, you can stop the raid. And at least one of those thugs must know where Ferret is holed up. If you cooperate, you won't get hurt. But if you give us any trouble, we'll kill you. Now, just so you know we mean business, I'd like one of you to give us trouble, so we can kill him as an example to the rest. Who's it gonna be then? Oh look, we have a volunteer. The king, no less. Have at him, fellas. This guy's rich! We're gonna have fun looting his cars. Next time, It is no longer advantageous for any of us to frequent the hideout in industrial. Presently, I shall inaugurate a new centre of operations in Bowerstone Market. You have been provided with a key which will permit access. Please endeavour to prevent its transference to an unauthorised individual. My lord. Well, I know your majesty. At your service. Salutations, mighty prince. You are looking well today, my lord. Lights out! Time for... You again? It does tend to obviate the entire objective of maintaining a secret hideout if your enemies can simply infiltrate whenever they've the inclination. Lads, perform the specific services for which I employ you expeditiously. Huh? Kill him! Fast! That's brilliant shot! Set me free! Oh. 
Oh, I love killing rich folk like you, lad. Ooh, that shot looks nasty. I believe I can state with relative confidence that your efforts are in vain. Even should it transpire that you vanquish my associates, this door is completely impenetrable. In addition to which, this cell contains a secret egress through which I may abscond whenever I desire. Meanwhile, my compatriots shall brutalize your person. Not exactly going your way, is it? You haven't lost your touch. I'm surprised his men were foolish enough to fight you. Now, truth be told, my superlative intellect notwithstanding, it would appear this is not, in fact, the specific cell I so confidently referenced earlier. The one with the secret exit has two beds. All right, you have prevailed, Your Majesty. I concede. However, I entreat you to entertain a certain proposal. You have nothing to offer, Ferret. It's over. Ah, that pronouncement is objectively devoid of merit. I happen to have on my person a substantial quantity of currency. Let me go free, and the money is yours. As far as I'm concerned, you can stay in there and... Good of you to demonstrate such compassion. I shan't be so ill-mannered as to outstay my welcome. Farewell. You have made great strides, Your Majesty. Witness the glory of your treasury. Don't you just want to go swimming in all that gold? But the kingdom demands your attention once more. The time has come to make a decision on Albion's drinking laws. Under Logan's rule, our si The residents of Millfields will be most pleased. They will find it money well spent, and I find it money well received. Let us move on to other matters, Your Majesty. You have a busy day in the throne room ahead. Samuel, the head of the Brightwall Academy, is ready to plead his case. I sincerely hope he isn't after a handout, though I'm sure Master Reaver will be the voice of reason, as always. My king, ready to serve yes, your majesty. Woo! For king and country. Yippee! Hello. All stand for the king. This is very exciting. We're going to see how the country is... Today, you decide on the status of the Brightwall Academy, Your Majesty. Samuel will speak for the town and its scholars. Reaver will dispute his cause. 
You may speak. <clears throat> your Majesty, it was your father who opened the doors to Albion's greatest seat of learning. Under his rule, knowledge and culture flourished, and so did the people of Brightwall. I ask only that you return to the wisdom of those days. Your brother closed the academy down, but it is in your hands to restore it. There is no greater proponent of the arts than myself, and I celebrate knowledge in all its forms. But our people are frightened and confused. The last thing they need is knowledge. Allow them the benefit of ignorance. Let only those who are truly prepared make use of the academy. The elite of our society will pay handsomely to indulge in erudition. Uh, but, but, but only the rich will be able to afford to learn. Precisely. Why give wisdom away when one can charge for it? What do you wish to do, Your Majesty? The Brightwall Academy will be reopened as promised, but we will charge admission fees. The Brightwall Academy shall be reopened to those who can afford its services. If that is how it must be, very well. But I am deeply disappointed you have broken your promise. Very good. I will make arrangements at once. Stimulate your intellect in the newly reopened Brightwall Academy. Suckle the knowledge from the land's greatest minds and avail yourself of the best library ever assembled. The reasonable enrollment fees are within reach of almost 1% of the population, so don't delay Brightwall Academy. As long as you earn, it's the place to learn. The court summons Page and Reaver. The matter before you today is the future of Bower Lake. Reaver will offer his proposal. Page will stand against him. You may speak. Your Majesty, a recent survey of Bower Lake has found that the waterbed is rich in valuable metals. Now, as amusing as it would be to make workers hold their breath as they mine these resources, I fear it would be impractical. Instead, we have no choice but to dam the river and drain the lake of all water. Once that is done, we will have a ready-made quarry ripe for the plucking. It will be a pity to disfigure the landscape so close to my former home, but it is a sensible course of action we need the resources in Bower Lake. It will become a quarry. The king has ruled. Bower Lake shall be drained and mined for resources. I applaud your enterprising spirit. The lake shall be drained at once. I hope you know what you're doing, Majesty. Behold the ugliness of nature, so miserly in its gifts, its very lakeness, an affront to all good sense. Now, see it transformed into an exquisite monument to human ingenuity. Soil and rock offering up life and hope to thousands. How can one fail to be moved by such generosity? Reaver Industries proudly presents the Bower Pits. I trust the court was not too dull today. In any case, I'm confident your final task will be most enjoyable. A loyal and wealthy member of our community has offered to make a sizable donation to our treasury. Her only request is that you go to Millfields to make the collection in person. A perfect chance to stretch your legs, Your Majesty.
Ready to die. Madam, I understand. without combat experience. We're losing, but I've I don't want to enter them. I want you to. Right. I was talking about me. Oh, just forget it. Ah, Your Majesty, it's such an honor to have you here. If only fate hadn't conspired to make me look like a fool. Beware the woods, Your Majesty. The soldiers may be superstitious, but there's no denying dangerous beasts lurk within. Good luck. I know you will succeed. At your command. Looking for the statue, Your Majesty? Follow the White Balverine. Right, you monster. Prepare to meet your... Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. For a moment there, I thought you were a Belverine. Damn things are always trying to get through our defenses. We burn silver nitrate in those lamps to keep them out. Kills them pretty quick if they hang around for too long. If a lamp goes out, well, I don't like to think what might happen then. One went out just recently, but we got it lit again fast. The man responsible, this bloke Connor, got punished. Severely. Before he disappears into the forest, he tells us there's gonna be a reckoning. He's probably in 25 different stomachs right now. That's my reckoning. You can come on out, everyone! It's safe! Ah, oh, it's our mighty king. Hello. Don't call this place Your dangerous, Royal Majesty.
Your Majesty, I've been expecting you. You've been through the village, have you? Charming hamlet. It's full of warm, wonderful people who'll give you the shirt off their back and condemn you to death for one simple mistake. Anyone can fall asleep on watch. You exile him into this forest and call it justice. But enough about that. You're here for that statue. It's quite a remarkable thing. It did everything the legend said it would. And now I don't need it anymore. <laughs> it's funny how things change. So if you want to take it back to that prig in Millfields, it's yours. Nearly free of charge. All I ask is a small favor. Destroy those silver nitrate lanterns. Then the village will get a taste of justice. The choice is yours. And it's a simple one. How simple? If you decline, my brothers will kill you. Ah, well. I suppose it was too much to hope for. Still, your choice won't save the village. Now that I'm the leader of the pack, we've got some brains to go with our brawn. We'll lose a few of the weaker members, but we'll deal with those lanterns on our own. In the meantime, killing you will be a good way to, shall we say, get the blood flowing. Stronger than I imagined, your majesty, but not strong enough. Prepare yourself for death. Your Majesty. Yay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You've saved us from certain destruction. We're in your debt. You'll always be welcome here, should you wish to return. Connor had this on him. It looks like a Belverine. It's yours if you want it. Greetings, my lord. At your service. You're back! Did you find the thief? Did you recover the You found it? Oh! I can barely contain my tears. <laughs> A magnanimous gesture indeed. Your subjects are lucky to be ruled by one so giving. With 
a fatidic attack not far away now, it is most encouraging to see the treasury doing so well. It makes one feel safer. I have taken to sleeping beneath the gold, actually. As for today's first order of business, you may have heard about the dire situation the Kingdom's economy finds itself in. Logan's policies always kept our cities on the edge of bankruptcy, and the panic caused by the fast approaching darkness has only exacerbated the situation. I'm afraid the only way to stop this slide into ruin is to bail out Bowerstone's financial institutions. The people are looking at you to save the economic disaster, but remember that doing so may condemn them to a much darker and bloodier f What shall we do, your majesty? A most astute and sensible choice. Financial ruin may bring much distress to your people, but the darkness brings certain... Shall we proceed with today's agenda? Kaelin, the representative for the Auroran people, has requested an audience with you. The court awaits in the throne room. Majesty. At your service. Attention. Your orders. At your all sing. Hail to the beloved Majesty. Hail. Today you must decide how much protection to grant Aurora. Kaylee will offer her proposal. Reva will stand against her. You may speak. Your Majesty, as you know, the threat from the deserts that surrounds my city has not diminished. The darkness could fall upon us once more at any moment. Aurora is part of your... Aurora is under our protection. It is our duty to build this outpost. The King's decision is final. A military outpost shall be erected in the deserts that surround Aurora. We shall not forget this gesture. Aurora thanks you. Ah, you are a whimsical monarch. And that is why you are so beloved. Very well, it shall be done. Weaver Industries is proud to present an exotic tale of romance, adventure and sand. The Desert Outpost. Bring forth Sabine of the Mispeak Dwellers. Today you decide on the fate of Mispeak, home of the Dwellers, Your Majesty. Sabine will speak for his people and their land. Reva will dispute his cause. You may speak. I come here seeking nothing but what was promised me and my people. You pledged to restore our home mountains and our right to dwell in them. We have fulfilled our end of the bargain. We have paid with our lives to sit you on that throne. Now you must fulfill your end. Undo the damage your brother did to our land, and our agreement shall be satisfied. Your Majesty, this sounds both an unnecessary expense and an impudent demand. What value is there in a few trees languishing amongst snow and rock? This is not the time to indulge some idyllic fantasy. Those forests are a resource, and we are in dire need of resources. I propose we expand on your brother's initiative and take what nature offers so readily. Say the word, and I will transform the worthless wasteland of Mist Peak into assets we can use to defend Albion. These hands are not yet so old or weak that I can't wring that pretty... The forests of Mist Peak are too important to waste. They will make a valuable resource. Mist Peak and its forests shall be logged to fuel the Kingdom's defense efforts. You have made an enemy for life, King. Beware a second revolution doesn't take this land before you can save it.
the forests of Mistpeak are our greatest national treasure, and now, thanks to Reva Industries, you can enjoy them too. Ships, weapons, and furniture are just some of the many wonders available to you now. Remember, nature wants us to use her. Happy anniversary, your majesty. One year as King of Albion. Doesn't time just fly? To celebrate this momentous day, I have prepared some fantastic events. First, you will stand still for several hours while a local artist paints your portrait. Then, you will choose the 47 varieties of flowers you wish to feed to Peru. Oh, you design thousands of Let's see. So be for The day has come, King. It is time for you to face the darkness. But you will do so in your true form. Over the past year, you have made decisions that reveal your nature, and which have affected the lives of all your subjects. Many see you as a tyrant, but you have done what was necessary to save your people. But you are more than a king. You are a hero. You are Albion's champion, its protector. This coming battle is the reason you had to take Logan's place. Only you can defeat the creature that dwells in the shadows. If you do not, all your efforts will have been in vain. Now go. Do what you were born to do. It's here. The darkness has reached Powerstone. Reports indicate that our defenses were able to hold off the worst of the first attack. But if we don't act quickly, even the armies we prepared for this day will not be enough. We have to get out on the streets, now! Today we fight for Albion! For, for Albion! Albion. Charge! Have you ever Defend seen your the city with your lives? We'll kill you for that. Good work. Two flat shots like us, we might stand a chance. Yes, no armor is stopping you. Is it? Nice one. He's the.
dead yes. fingers whisper. Dead fingers claw at one million eyes. You have done such hurtful things. The people you know shall rejoice in your death. close to that thing. Where are you? Show yourself! The lost sheep returns to the flock. No one ever leaves the darkness behind. A 
I'm sorry. Oh, you took away the darkness. It's been inside me all this time. But it's light now. I can see the sky. And it's light. I don't think I can fight anymore. It's all over, Walter. We won. We beat it together. Do you remember the stories I tell you when you were a child? There was a great king once. The mightiest hero of them all. Remember what you would say. Teach me to be a hero. You've done me proud, boy. You've always done me proud. <sighs> oh, Walter! I think old Walter would have liked it out here. He was always a fan of looking tall and stony. I can imagine what he'd say if he was here now. Shut up, Ben. <laughs> exactly. Walter was right about you. You're a hero in every sense of the word. The hero Albion needed. What will you do now? I will continue to serve you the best way I can. I belong down in the city. The people there will always need help. Goodbye, my king. You have done what I thought impossible. You are the ruler I could never be. But you don't need me anymore. And Albion will heal easier without me. Well, king, old chum, ruler supreme, pal, you did it. You saved the kingdom. And it's time I said my goodbyes. I'm not cut out to be a general. And I think I'd like to start travelling again. Or maybe see if Paige needs any help down in industrial. But before I go, let's send off our friend in style, shall we? This one's for you, Walter. This is the world as it could have been. Devoid of colour, devoid of life. It is thanks to you that it isn't so, and you ruled as strong leaders should. It is not everyone who understands the necessity of making sacrifices. It is what fate requires of us. You were brave to break your promise to Sabine and his people. But it is through such decisions that wars are won and lost. You swore an oath to Page to better the lives of your people, and you did so even in the face of great danger. You understood, as your brother did, that Aurora was a doomed land from the start. Saving Albion was always more important. Without the strength to make those choices, we would not be standing here now. Perhaps we shall meet again one day, King. Aren't you going to tell me my future? The future will reveal itself when it is ready to do so.